Bula FM number dua and seri. In the news tonight, measles alert prompts police to monitor recreational areas. Alleged child trafficker found guilty by assessors. And youth voices necessary in climate talks. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Police are now patrolling recreational areas to prevent large social gatherings as the risk of contracting measles remains, with indications that people are not following the Health Ministry's advisory to avoid mass gatherings. Police have been called in to assist. Kelly Vavallo reports. The police officers will now be on the ground warning Fijians to move out from picnic spots. This as the number of measles cases now stands at 16. Especially for uh, Masilai, Pacific Harbour and even my super park. Eh? So uh, our officers uh, are there on a daily basis and they will uh, warn people to, um, uh, those that are there to uh, move out from those places. Eh? And we will continue to do it up till the uh, advisory is uh, stood down. Eh? With the holiday season just around the corner, a lot of family functions are held at popular spots. Chief of Operations ACP Martin Gyolevu says necessary actions will be enforced if there is disobedience from the public. Take away disobedience of lawful order and we are going to take actions when, when necessary according to law. Head of Health Protection Dr. Alicia Sahu Khan is reminding the public that measles is contagious and non-essential travel to Seru Namosi and Nasilai village in Nakelo is discouraged. We are uh, advising people to not attend mass gatherings and for the rest of Fiji, um, we're asking the avoidance of gatherings that include people that come from different parts of the country as well as overseas. The Health Ministry is conducting an immunization campaign targeting people who may not be fully immunized and are at risk of measles infection. Close to 100,000 people were vaccinated in phase one of the campaign. The second phase began yesterday. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Alleged child trafficker Chosavata Werelangi has been found guilty by three assessors. Werelangi is charged with one count of aggravated sexual servitude and three counts of domestic trafficking of children. It is alleged that between the 18th and 22nd of July 2015, Werelangi threatened or forced a 15-year-old girl to enter into or remain in sexual servitude. It is also alleged that he facilitated the transportation of the complainant from Nausori to Rewa Street in Suva with the intent that the girl would be used to provide sexual services. Judge Justice Daniel Gaunda will give his judgment on Monday morning. Young people need to be used more for decision making when it comes to climate change, just as Fiji has done with Timothy Naulusala. Day three of COP25 in Spain has heard that too often young people are used only when it suits. This on the day that religious leaders gather to throw their support behind the fight against climate change and backing the young generation to take more of a leading role. Day three of COP25 and today was all about young people and they fight against climate change. Now, young Fijian, you would remember Timothy Naulusala from COP23, who made an impact on the world stage. And that is something that was in the discussions earlier on today, whereby climate activists are saying other nations should follow suit in what Fiji has done. When I refer back to the Fijian, young Fijian back in COP23, when we were discussing the Talanaoa process, how the young Fijian gave the impacts of climate change, of how he is feeling by himself and how it affects the other Fijians around him. And also the same for the millions of global South young people who are facing the disasters of climate change. Some powerful statements there from the Indian activist Biswasi, who says too often young people are taken for a ride by some leaders and are dumped post-COP events. That needs to stop. What I, I was saying is about, yes, they are included at a certain level, but then the other generations are de deciding a level for them, but not including them in the decision-making level. Faith-based leaders also have gathered in Madrid 
and today spoke about putting aside differences and to focus on the youth to take our fight against climate change to the next level. And the rights for our young people, the rights for our children, and even those that have yet to be born to have a safe environment. Young Timothy is still the talk after COP23 and is now joined at COP25 by teenage activist Greta Thunberg, who is the face of COP25. She, the youngster, arrived earlier on in Spain today and has been greeted with a huge fanfare as people get behind young activists such as Timothy and Greta. The message to the world leaders is clear. Get involved and get ready to fight the extreme climate change that we are facing with the help of our younger generation to protect our future generations. Interesting FBC News. Topics such as early weather warning systems, simplifying scientific weather terms and climate prediction is being discussed at the three-day National Climate Outlook Forum in Nandi. The forum also provides an opportunity to get feedback on how to provide simplified weather and climate-related information to the public. Philippe Nicasso has more. These stakeholders have been reminded that weather forecasts with a few days lead time are useful in responding to hazards to minimize the loss of assets and lives. The main challenge is to customize information so that it is relevant to climate sensitive points of users for decision making process. Very, very important. This requires a good understanding of the needs and requirements of these users. They were also reminded that information passed out to the public regarding climatic events are critical. One of the common issues that you know we normally get is the uh, the technicality of the the, the the bulletins or the products we have. Uh, they want us to simplify a little bit more. So we're trying our best to simplify uh, the science in the op our bulletins. The various parts of society gather again for the benefit to to avail uh, uh, the maximum use of, of the information that exists uh, and to prepare ourselves for you know, potential um, adverse effects uh, from, from the climate. The program, which is funded by the Russian government and the United Nations Development Program, aims to improve climate service delivery for Fiji. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Fijian Broadcasting Corporation's Bull FM Rechie Melem competition is underway at the Roop's mega complex in Nakasi. The competition started at midday and the participants are standing in 16 by 16 cm squares surrounded by water cups. The last man standing by 3 p.m. on Saturday will win the 2019 Hyundai Tucson worth more than $69,000. Lena Reese has more. The participants had mixed feelings minutes before the competition got underway. I'll take the car back to South South so I can take my mom around the world. I have the rules in my mind that, I'm, or that I have to follow when, I'm, when I'll be standing there. I want to try my best to own that, uh, own that car. That car it took me one only. Cups are very close to the cup that we're standing on, so I'm just really cautious and excited. FPC Chief Executive Riaz Saikuyum met with participants and wished them the best of luck. I'd just like to say I wish all the participants well. Everyone knows the, comp uh, the competition rules. It's going to be exciting. Uh, the cars, uh, are, apparently the cars value has gone up in the, in the last couple of months, so it's worth more now than it used to be. Bula FM Richie Amilem competition is being streamed live on Bula FM's Facebook page. Lena Reese, FPC News. We now cross live to Lena Reese, who is in Nakasi. Lena, what's the atmosphere like, and has anyone been eliminated yet? There has been one elimination so far here at Mbula FM's Nrechia Melem competition that's being held here at Roop's Mega Complex in Nakasi. Now, how this came about? The gentleman who was eliminated, he did attend. He did. He got here in the morning, and the organizers instructed him and the rest of the participants to have their medical checks. However, he didn't appear for his medical checks. All 20 names were announced, and only 19 made their way to their respective positions where they're standing right now. So that one participant was eliminated. And if these participants remain standing, the last man standing on Saturday after 3 p.m. walks away, drives away rather with the car that's parked in the back all right it's a, a new 2019 Hyundai Tucson with more than $69,000 also the game changes 
if more than one man is standing come Saturday, if more than one man is standing come Saturday, they will have to pull this vehicle and the person that records the fastest time wins the car. Jackie. Well, best of luck to all the competitors and exciting stuff. Thanks so much for that, Lena. Up ahead, 20 youth for Nandera's Red Zone Fine Employment. A new vessel to enhance Fiji Navy's capabilities. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The state has requested for a harsh sentence against military officer Rajiv Padyachi, who was convicted of attempted murder. Padyachi was convicted on the 29th of last month when the judge agreed with the unanimous opinion of the assessors. Catherine Krishna with the details. The state has asked for a 12 to 20 year imprisonment term for Rajiv Padyachi with a non parole period to be set. In their submission, the DPP's office submitted that court should set precedents for deterrence of such acts and it should serve as a warning to would-be offenders. The court heard the victim was in a relationship with a man who premeditated her murder for monetary gains. State also submitted that attempt to murder the vulnerable is a worrying issue and it was really fortunate that the officers were at the scene and helped the victim who would have died otherwise. The state lawyer also said there are eight other unsolved murder cases with the DPP with no suspects found. The state counsel said the victim had no money for repayment and therefore decided to kill the victim. The counsel also said that military officers are trained to protect the country and the citizens, but Pariachi did otherwise. Meanwhile, defense in their mitigation submission requested the judge to consider a lenient sentence and an imprisonment term of less than three years. Defense also submitted that Pariachi is a valued member of the Fiji military forces. Pariachi will be sentenced next Thursday. Catherine Krishna. FBC News. More than 20 youths from Nandera and Asinu have managed to secure jobs through the Fiji Police Community Policing Initiative. Nandera Methodist Circuit Senior Pastor Reverend Manasa Levatambua says this is a positive achievement as Nandera was marked a red zone for drug related activities earlier this year. Chasina Nunga reports. In Nandera Methodist Circuit and the Fiji Police Force have been visiting businesses in Nandera and Asinu requesting jobs for this youth. It's like we are providing them employment, eh? especially the, the young youth eh? who do not have uh, jobs. So we outreach, we reach out to them, awareness program, uh, and uh, the police also uh, give them job. Reverend Manasa Levitabua believes the youth were involved in illegal activities because they were unemployed. Uh, it's good working with the community policing, we able to facilitate those, uh, eh? look uh, to, to provide them jobs through working with other business houses eh? because of the unemployment. Eh? And uh, we are so you know, happy to see that they are being all employed. About 26, so uh, 26 uh, they were employed. Police drug units, ASP and REM Masitambua says a collaborative effort is needed to address the issue of drugs. The police is there to actually support the Methodist Church in uh, giving out uh, uh, letters or awareness in regards to drugs to the members of the Methodist and uh, other religious. Ten other youth from the area expected to start work soon. Chosei Nunga, FBC News. The Fiji Navy today commissioned the RFNS Volasinga, a gift from Korea worth an estimated $6.5 million. The newly constructed vessel will not only boost the Navy's fleet to six ships, it will also increase their capabilities and will primarily enhance their oceanography unit. Maggie Boyle was at the RFNS Stanley Brown Naval Base and filed this report. Christians before heading to the high seas, introducing the RFNS Volasinga. To rely on our oceans not only for our people, for our daily livelihood, 
but as a means of security and prosperity for people. The Fiji Navy, her addition will not only boost their fleet, she will enable them to assist in a number of areas. It gives us an extra capability, especially in terms of hydrographic survey. We need to uh, properly map our waters, uh, other areas that they can assist us with in terms of assisting our Fiji's blue economy, uh, you know, maritime trade, uh, coastal development. In partnership with South Korea, the ship was constructed within 17 months and boasts the latest technology. Our close partnership shows an impressive record of achievement like marine science and technology MOU signed in 2012 and the port development MOU signed in 2015. The RFNS Wola Singer is a welcome addition to the Fiji Navy. Not only will it include the capability to assist with border surveillance, it will primarily be able to effectively map out Fiji's waters better. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Coconut farmers in Savo Savo are learning about coconut palm selection, planting and harvesting techniques. The two-day training by the Fiji National University and the Ministry of Agriculture aims to improve the quantity of coconuts per tree as well as its quality. Eleanor Trangaivi reports. Existing and upcoming coconut farmers in Savo Savo are learning how to select good mother palms for planting and how they can get high flesh content from each nut. A good nut at production would see that they have good coconut produced, you know, a good number of fruits on the trees. Yes. So they would also want to have high flesh content of that particular fruit. The coconut industry in Savo Savo started 140 years ago and to date it is still the major coconut producer in the country. However, the aging trees are affecting the quality of nuts produced. Older coconuts would give lesser fruits compared to the young ones. The two-day training will also see the participants learn how to harvest coconut, including the different types of uh, coconut climbing techniques, as well as how to pick the nuts. We would like our farmers to learn the technical skills on the uh, mother palm selection because uh, it's key for the coconut planting. Uh, we want uh, the farmers to understand that uh, good uh, seedlings will produce uh, the high yield uh, coconut variety. The training is facilitated by the Copra Millers of Fiji and funded by the Secretariat of the Pacific Community and the European Union. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. My mom was one of a kind. A statement made by Andy Losalini Lomas while presenting her eulogy during the Thanksgiving service for her late mother, Venina Lomas, in Dambati outside Suva. Venina Lomas contributed immensely to journalism in Fiji and the Pacific through the Pacific Islands News Association in its heydays. The veteran journalist lost her battle to cancer last Friday. Venina, who is survived by her daughter and husband Peter Lomas, was laid to rest today. My mother was a straightforward woman, black and white. She said it as it was, as it is. There was no gray with her. At times it would be hard to hear that, but I appreciated it. Well, thank you, Mom. She was a woman of integrity, afraid integrity, and believed in truth. And it's business time now with Kelly. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up after the break. Going to reintroduce eco-friendly products. And in growing Fiji, TISI Sangam to construct retirement village. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because it's what? My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Our home sapta Michi FM sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Michi FM. It's number one. Our name is Sagar Reddy, we are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. In the Gaul Town Tawa, Mirchi FM, Dago Mama. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Leading business with the widespread use of plastic damaging the environment, Star Printery has introduced eco-friendly paper products. The company is now able to offer an alternative pl to plastic straws, cups and styrofoam takeaway boxes, which take more than 100 years to decompose. Kritika Kumar reports. 
Star Print Director Sandeep Chauhan says they are taking more responsibility for their actions and decisions. When you read about climate change and the styrofoam and the millions of years it takes for it to break down and yet it doesn't really break down either, you feel sorry. The new initiative will benefit the economy as well as Fijians as they are creating more jobs. In terms of uh, doing the right thing, in terms of ensuring that there is no damage to the environment. So it, it can only add to the initiatives and the work that the government's already doing towards eradicating plastic-based products. Acting Prime Minister Ayaz said Kayum has commended the company for their initiative. You can see they're already uh, making products here. You have uh, a paper made which is, uh, you know, uh, has a particular covering, which means that the food does not stick on it, food does not leak from it. So you have cardboard boxes to carry your takeaways. They also have paper-based plates, cups, and also paper-based straws. So all of this available in the market. More than $5 million has been invested in this project, which is in line with the government's initiative to ban the plastic bags, cups, straws, and styrofoam takeaway boxes from January. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. We now join Sinifa from the HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Let's look at the forex market today. Australia's trade surplus decreased to $4.5 billion in October from a revised $6.85 billion in the previous month. Their exports slumped 5% month-on-month while imports hit record high. The U.S. dollar and export-oriented currencies found support as upbeat trade comments from President Donald Trump cheered the market. The fluid situation around Sino-U.S. trade negotiations has cast a pall on financial markets heading into Christmas, with major economies coping under the weight of weak exports, investments, and corporate profits. In New Zealand, in a keenly anticipated decision, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand governors said that, systematically important, banks in the country will need to lift their total capital to 18% of risk-weighted assets. This saw the Kiwi gaining investor attention. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Thanks, Sinifa. Here today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar saw a marginal rise against the U.S. dollar, the euro, and the Japanese yen. It slipped against the Chinese yuan, the Australian, and New Zealand dollar, as well as the PNG Kina. Looking at commodities, the price of oil rose further to $58.28 per barrel. Gold fell slightly to $1,475 as well, and silver ending at $1,690. Per ounce. In Grand Fiji, a retirement village will be constructed to ensure Fijians live a decent life after years of hard work. The project is an initiative of the then India Sanmarga Ike Sangam, which will be built on the freehold land in Nawai Nandi. Pranita Prakash reports talks to build the village started six years ago. Sixteen villas will be constructed during the first phase of the project. This will be uh, two-bedroom villas uh, with a central facility. Uh, and it is a retirement village. It is uh, uh, not an old people's home. Let's be very clear. It is a retirement village and uh, the villas will be for sale. And at this stage, uh, subject to uh, all legal uh, Clarifications, it will be under strong title. TISI Sangam General Secretary Damen Gounder says the construction will begin by April next year. We've got a few uh, more uh, minor uh, regulatory work to get through, to, and um, once all this is done, we should be able to break it down. Gounder adds the project will cost more than $3 million and it will take around 18 months to complete. The second phase will consist of other amenities such as a tennis court and restaurant. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thank you, Kelly, and good evening in sports tonight. Captain Talks' seventh passion with Voices of the Series. And for Mombati, excited about new journey with Silk Tales. There's some more coming up.
Portugal o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Angonoa, e o Toca, a Guido Talitaina na Bula FM, a Guido Talitaina na Serre. Ni Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, a Bula FM na Ana Cassi. Na Angonoa, a Guido Ativio na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Ni Bula vem cá, na Angonoa, Jerry, e a Angonoa Lampasa, a Guido Barronga e na Bula FM. Bula FM, nombor dua en seri. PG Sevens head coach Gareth Baber says they've covered well all aspects of their game in training. Speaking from Dubai to FBC Sports, Baber says their warm-up match against Wales yesterday gave them a good indication of their current form. Bebe adds the players are responding well and they hope to carry the momentum through to the next three days of competition. Well, the positives are that, you know, things that um, sometimes take a little while to get put under pressure in tournament, like line-out scrummage, restarts, defensive system, uh, structures and attack. Um, you know, they were, they were positive. Um, you know, we're still working on, uh, without getting the tackle in there, it's always very difficult when you're defending PG Sevens captain Poland Rani Sinukulo was put in the spotlight yesterday in Dubai. The soft spoken skipper having to face World Series commentators for an interview. Kuladama with his report. Straight after the captain's photo shoot yesterday, the Fiji Sevens keeper was questioned by the voices of the World Series. So that big win in Paris last year, how were the celebrations when you got back to Fiji after you got the title again? Yeah, people back home were really happy about the boys and uh, we also. Uh, did a good, a good uh, history there. Uh, win back to back for so long time uh, when uh, Fiji started playing uh, rugby sevens. And uh, yes, we did uh, people back home proud and happy. Rani Sinukula was pretty diplomatic while answering some of the questions. You talk about history. You guys have got a proud history in Dubai. I remember you beating me about 20 million times. But what do you guys go so good here? Yeah, uh, the boys are uh, looking forward to this uh, tournament uh, this weekend, and uh, it's good to start uh, at a high note on the on the on the series, uh, in which you know it'll get you to a good space when it come to the to the end of the series, and uh, that's our main main plan, just to attack the uh, uh, series early. We can't wait to see you do your thing this weekend. We can't wait to see the reigning champs back in action. Follow Johnny Sinikula. Benaka? Thank Up you. First time I made a tackle. <laughs> well, there sure will be a lot of tackles made by the skipper in Dubai. Akui Ladama, FBC Sports. Kabekini Tambo will make his World Rugby 7 Series debut for Fiji and Dubai tomorrow. The Yami Thea forward is uh, in Gareth Paper's final 12 member squad named this morning. The 25-year-old will team up with his elder, with elder brothers Isoa Tambu and Sevuloni Modenidangi, who have also made the cut. Polioni Ratu is the 13th player, while Apanisa the Kaumbalabu will not feature in Dubai. Fiji will play Japan at 4.02 a.m. tomorrow in its first pool match. Australian-based uh, Mericeni Levere will get a taste of the Women's World Series when she runs out for the Fijiana in Dubai. Levere is part of coach Sayasi Fuli's final 12 for the Dubai Sevens. The 27-year-old from Nangando in Nandi is related to flying Fijians winger Veroniki Ngoneba. Two players who created history for the Fijiana 15s last week, Lavinia Tinai and Rusila Nangasawa, are also part of the side. Dual international Roela Randini Avuni, Rachel Lee Ndabewa, Ana Maria Naimasi, Asinati Sabu and Luisa Tisolo have also added more depth to the team. The Fijiana will play all their pool games tomorrow, starting with Australia at 12.12 a.m. They will then meet Spain at 6 p.m. before taking on Ireland at 11.12 p.m. You can watch the Dubai Sevens live on FPC TV and FPC Sports. Northampton Saints have signed flying Fijians hooker Sam Matavesi from championship side Cornish Pirates. This will be his first place of the Galga Premiership after a loan spell in France last season with Toulouse, who went on to claim the top 14 title. Matavesi is relishing the opportunity to compete in the top level of English rugby. Matavesi, brother of Newcastle Falcons duo Josh and Joel, also works for the Royal Navy at Cornwall. As preparations continue for the Kaiviti Silk Tales Rugby League, one man has vowed to give it his all for the team. For Mombati prop Kiko Noke says to debut in the New South Wales Ron Massey Cup next year is a huge step forward for Fiji. Savewanga has more. 
Being one of the many waiting for this opportunity, Kiki Konoke says he's ready to shine one more time on the international stage. It's an honor and a privilege, you know, it's what every local player has been dreaming to about and it's been like a couple of years now since we've heard about it and to be part of the first ever Silk team is just a big honor. Noke has played in the Queensland Cup and has had a taste of international club footy with the Magpies. I was with the South Logan Magpies in Australia and I was playing in the Queensland Cup and I went down for a year in two legs and it's similar. Um, the thing is, it's, it's similar, but you know, the level is just different. Silk Tales head of athletic performance, Tom Watkins, says there are a lot of raw talents in the squad that need exposure. So the preparations have been really uh, fantastic this week. We've um, got a really good group of boys with uh, a lot of raw talent here. And um, it's something that's very exciting and I think something that uh, all the people of Fiji should be very excited about, you know. Uh, a local team entering into the Ron Massey Cup um, and one that will be very competitive, I think. The Kaiviti still tells continued preparations with some players yet to join the side. New South Wales Ron Messi Cup will be played in March next year. Save Wanga, FBC Sports. Aussie rules continues to grow in Fiji and the Pacific. AFL Oceania Development Manager Ben Drew believes the Pacific is full of raw talent waiting to be developed. He adds more people are aware of the pathways that AFL provides and interest in the sport continues to grow. Grow. We're growing very quickly. We average about 100,000 participants a year across the Pacific. Uh, Fiji, on average, would have sort of that 10 to 15,000 themselves in, across Suva and over in the West. Um, it's improving and the talent's getting better, but more importantly, there's just another option and another opportunity for a quality program for the youth and kids to come be part of. Five Fiji table tennis players touring Australia will be chasing a spot at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The players are left for Melbourne today to take part in the Olympics preparation tour. The five are Carolyn Lee, sisters Grace and Sally He, Vicky Wu and Jay Chauhan. Aria Begum reports. The five athletes left for Australia with high hopes to make the country proud. We ask them to do their best because we'll be playing against some very good teams, Australia and New Zealand. So... Hopefully our chances are high in there. Narendra Lal says the players have prepared well. They have been preparing well for this uh, qualification. Uh, hopefully they, they will be up to part of the games. 13-year-old Jay Johan, who won a medal at this year's Pacific Games, says a silver or a bronze medal will be enough. I expect to receive a lot of... Uh, experience from playing with plus since it's qualifications Australia number one and all around the Pacific and Oceania is going to be playing so I just feel to experience most of the time. The Olympic preparation tour begins this Saturday in Mornington, Australia. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. That's it from sports and new media later on. Find out how social media could be messing with your brain. That's coming up. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife, I'm not radio Fiji to both in the Suntai, both a chap program, number one radio. Kumar Sami Naika, Bongo Alibu Latoka, Radio Fiji to me, Purana Gana Lage, I may both a chalage. Kumar, Nakafi. And he joins us now with the latest from weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. A wonderful Thursday. Yes, it was wonderful because we mostly had sunny spells. Now, on the other note, Christmas is only 20 days away. Woohoo! I'm pretty sure your plans for Christmas are sorted. Now, checking the West out today, if you're thinking of coming to Fiji and staying in the West, then it has the best weather to have fun. East winds from Pek Harbor to Suva, sunny as well, light showers will take over tonight. And up north, cool and very settled, the place to be at for adventure. 
At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, low tide at 8.47 tonight with high tide at 2.45 a.m. Sunrise at 6.21. For tomorrow, Friday is the word that is on everyone's mind right from Monday. Enjoy and have a great one with nicer spills. Tomorrow's Dems, the low talker will be warm at 32 degrees. The sugar city is definitely sweet. And looking further on to Saturday, it will be hot but bearable. And that's all the weather from the weather world. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse, we asked, should the measles vaccination campaign be expanded outside the central division? All Fijians should be injected. All Fijians should be injected to prevent the spread of measles. We need it because it's spreading. Yes, we always need it because uh, 16 cases already. Recapping the main stories for tonight, measles alert prompts police to monitor recreational areas. Alleged child trafficker found guilty by assessors and youth voices necessary in climate talks. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, should Fijians have visa-free access to more countries? Visit their Fiji website to answer. And today's shot of the day, beautiful flower blossoms on the sandy beach as the sun sets to mark the end of yet another day, sent in by Anj Singh. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, via Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. I'm Shamiza and I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajnita Lata and I'm from Vatulalo Bagh. And we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot.